Okay. So uh, I'll be taking the full uh, like 15 minutes. So if anyone has any questions, please uh, submit them in the chat box. Um, okay, so my presentation today is concepts and data architecture, uh, paradigms that make uh, business intelligence or data science work at an uh, enterprise level. So uh, the motivation behind this talk is that uh, I've seen lots of talk recently about uh, data science, deep learning, or AI, and uh, we had one today from uh, Ahmed Hashmi. And but I want to talk more about, let's say, the stuff behind the scenes, or the stuff that makes uh, it work on an enterprise level. Um, so in today's talk, I'll be uh, talking more about, let's say, the high-level concepts, so uh, no terminal, no code. So I just want to fill the gap uh, on the behind the scenes stuff. Okay. So if you are like a single developer, very simple uh, setting, uh, you have your app and you have your database and maybe you do some, let's say reports and maybe some dashboards and maybe some data science stuff. And that works out well for you if you are a single developer. But if you are, if you are uh, an enterprise, then the story is different. Uh, you have multiple apps, you have uh, multiple uh, databases. And if you want to get, let's say, a data item from here and from here, uh, you, you need to join. And then maybe you need another data item from here and you join again. And then that becomes uh, quickly uh, not really uh, feasible. Uh, so the solution to this problem is that you need to have what's called a data warehouse, okay? So in the data warehouse, you basically take data from multiple sources. You do your sort of processing transformation. And you uh, do the reports and dashboards and data science, etc. So like a, a formal definition of what a data warehouse is, uh, a data warehouse is a repository of current and historical data. So it's not just the up-to-date data, it's also historical data of potential interest to employees throughout the organization with the main purpose of supporting decision-making. So uh, it's not really, you need data um, that is relevant for the business to function. Uh, so maybe let's say uh, a subsystem log data not, might not be uh, of benefit to you, so you would not add it to the data warehouse. And uh, this concept has been around a long time, uh, since like the 1970s. So it's really nothing uh, new. But I haven't seen lots of people talk about it, so that's why I'm talking about it here, here today. Uh, so again, the main purpose of the uh, data warehouse is to support uh, the business or business intelligence activities. And uh, what is business intelligence, or let's say the, uh, the mantra, modern uh, mantra or mission statement for business intelligence, is that employees need the uh, right information at the right time and in the right place. It's okay, so ba basically supporting business activities uh, to help the uh, system uh, go. Okay. And uh, what are the benefits? Uh, mostly it's for data synergy. So if you have uh, taken any, let's say, uh, if you come from a computer science background, you've taken any, let's say, uh, network class, then uh, you'd know like the value of a network is like proportional to n square in terms of like of the number of nodes or routers in the, in the network. And uh, sort of the same uh, principle uh, applies here in a data warehouse. So if you have, let's say, a data item that is here, data item that is here, data item, item that's here, at its own, maybe it's not very useful, but if you combine all of this together in an enterprise data warehouse, then the value of the information you have uh, becomes more. And uh, uh, I've seen yeah, uh, enough real world, uh, and from my experience examples, that uh, suggest that uh, data synergy is like a big deal. Uh, and it can also yeah, move the organization that you're in in the right direction and also and you move um, upper management to make the uh, correct uh, decision quickly. If you put, let's say, data from the uh, correct sources and present it in a, in a nice way. 
The other benefit is uh, data consistency. So for example, you have uh, dates, uh, data, let's say uh, the date in here is like formatted in this format and in this is formatted in this format. Uh, so we need to, let's say, uh, make the data consistent uh, for you, uh, for you to, to benefit from it. Or maybe here, this system uses the uh, something, let's say the, the ID or uh, uh, primary key as cust, uh, cust ID. Maybe this one uses uh, a civil ID. Uh, so, so we need some way to, to sort of uh, make the data consistent. And of course you will end up with, uh, if you implement this, what's called the data warehouse, uh, you will end up with uh, faster reporting analytics or data science. And you will have data timeliness, meaning that you're reporting uh, you can have like uh, uh, daily or weekly or monthly reports and data will be sent out to, to end users in, in, uh, in a timely manner. And the final thing is that it will relieve the processing from production systems. So instead of running uh, big queries on production systems and slowing things down for the end customer, you can run uh, your queries here on the data warehouse. And uh, even if this falls, it's okay. Uh, it's no issues at least you're not uh, disrupting the uh, the production systems uh, a quick mention on the on the roles here so if you are in an enterprise and uh, you need to communicate with someone regarding this uh, this uh, so in here uh, mostly you have uh, dbas database ad admins for to for matching the uh, production let's say databases uh, and then here for the uh, uh, data warehouse, you have what's called a data engineer, okay? Or the old uh, name for them is like an ETL developer. And uh, the users of a, of a data warehouse here, you have data analysts, you have maybe MIS analysts, maybe you have what's called um, a data scientist. So these are the users for, for the data warehouse. And maybe these people generate uh, reports that go to, to, to uh, a business analyst to, to make decisions on, uh, et cetera. So I, I think uh, you get the picture. Okay, so, the, uh, so this is the data warehouse, but the main, uh, sorry, the thing that is lacking here is that uh, it mainly supports what's called uh, structured data. So it does not support uh, unstructured data or let's say uh, big data. So this is where uh, the data lake uh, comes in. And uh, we talked like, uh, that the data warehouse has been around since like the 1970s, at least in concept. Uh, the data lake has been around since 2010, I believe. And uh, currently there's like a recent move to, to move uh, the uh, uh, data lake or data warehouse to the cloud. So we've seen in 2020, like an IPO of a company called uh, Snowflake, uh, which is like a cloud uh, data lake or data warehouse uh, company. So uh, briefly, uh, this is, let's say your uh, data sources. Okay, and this is your uh, data warehouse of uh, let's say semi clean, semi usable uh, data. Uh, so you take data from the data sources, you transform it, you do extract, transform and load. Okay, this is operation. Uh, and you end up with uh, structured data. But with the data lake, uh, which is back here, okay, this is the data lake, uh, you do what's called an uh, ELT operation. So extract, load, and then do all your transformation. Okay, so uh, this is like the uh, main difference, and this is mainly. Uh, takes in unstructured data. Okay, so it's like a similar to a water desalination process. Um, okay. So where does this uh, data lake sit? Uh, it's not really a replacement for a data warehouse. It's more like a, a, it needs to be a complement. Uh, so uh, this is the data warehouse. This is the data lake, okay? And the data warehouse is responsible for handling, let's say, reading data from operational systems and, and, and processing it, et cetera, for, for BI uh, mainly purposes. Uh, but the uh, data lake takes data, let's say, unstructured data, raw data, and then it just yeah, it puts it here in the, let's say, big data uh, 
systems or uh, environments. And uh, one thing here, uh, this is mostly uh, commercial. And this is mostly uh, um, non-commercial or let's say um, uh, commodity hardware. Okay, so this is like cheap hardware. This is like sophisticated hardware. And uh, since it is cheap, you can just dump whatever data that, that uh, you want. So just to a quick recap, the key differences between a data warehouse and a data lake. Uh, data warehouse, you have structured data and a data lake, you have basically uh, unstructured data. In a data warehouse, you have a schema on write. On a data lake, you have a schema on read. And a data lake, you have a low cost storage. This is like the main uh, differences. Okay, so this is, uh, yani the data lake is uh, now very well uh, established. And uh, uh, it's like the, the, uh, the main thing that, uh, uh, let's say data intensive organizations work with. Uh, and, but recently there have been uh, something what's called the data mesh. And this concept started in like uh, 2019. Okay, so it's not very well tested, but uh, I've seen it gain uh, traction uh, in, in the, let's say, data community. Uh, so what is a data mesh? Uh, I mean, we've seen like, uh, in general, there are uh, a movement from a monolith to a distributed system or a microservice. Okay, and this is sort of the same. They want to sort of decentralize the uh, data warehouse or data lake. Uh, but that's not really, I think, the, the uh, major point uh, with this uh, paradigm shift. Uh, I think, uh, uh, if we go here, so in a normal uh, data warehouse or a data lake, you have uh, data from your sources and, and uh, you do uh, the, what's called the data pipelines, okay? So you take data and then you maybe process it and then you take data and then you provide it to your data scientist or data analyst, okay? So in, in this uh, current systems, the data warehouse or data lake, uh, uh, these guys are like the first uh, class citizen, okay? Uh, the data pip pipeline is the first class uh, citizen. But in, in, in this uh, data mesh approach, approach uh, uh, the first class uh, citizen is the uh, data product, okay? So let me explain this a bit. Um, so the, I work in a bank and, and let's say uh, there are many several data in a bank and one of the, let's say, domains of data is like credit card data, okay? So uh, this domain of credit card data is assigned to me, okay? And uh, uh, I'm supposed to know everything there is to know about credit cards and all the data related to credit cards. And, uh, and, uh, and my main KPI is to make uh, the users of my data product happy, okay? So instead of, let me go back a bit here. So instead of if I am, let's say a, a data scientist or, or data analyst or whatever, instead of uh, uh, trying to sort of figure out does, does my data that I need lies here or here or here or here or whatever, or is it available in the data warehouse somewhere? Who should I ask, etc. cetera? So in, in this, uh, I would just go to me, uh, or let's say the domain owner uh, of the uh, credit card data. And then I just uh, ask my questions and he's supposed to help me. And his KPI is to, to treat uh, this uh, domain of data as a product and, and help me uh, do my work. So uh, it's very sort of like a, a, an organic uh, sort of operation, uh, unlike the, the previous or current uh, paradigms. And it makes data discoverable, uh, tr 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 trustworthy, so data is of high quality, etc. And if we zoom out a little bit, uh, so maybe you have uh, multiple domains. So maybe I handle the user's domain, and someone else handles the artist domain, someone else handles the media domain. So uh, everyone, uh, let's say, or maybe a team handles the user's domain, etc. And, and they function sort of in, in an organic manner, as you see, sort of like a mesh uh, organization, okay? And this is like uh, the main idea, but it's not really the underlying technology. It's more like a, a philosophical shift in, in mindset. Okay, and uh, yeah. 
So final remark. Uh, so now you, you heard me talk about data warehouse, data lake, and uh, data mesh, right? So uh, all of these sounds uh, great. It helps uh, data scientists to help uh, the organization run, it helps data analysts, et cetera. Uh, but the main issue with it is that like 85% uh, uh, of them or lots of uh, big data projects fail. And uh, there are many reasons for it, uh, but I think the main reason for it is that they treat it as a project, as a project with a deadline, okay? And that doesn't work. Uh, you need to treat your uh, data, uh, let's say initiatives as a process. It's not a project, okay? It's never, these things are never ending. Uh, you're always going to add, let's say, new services, uh, new uh, apps, uh, new systems to your organization. Uh, maybe you have data from external sources, you, you uh, uh, buy system from a vendor, etc. So it needs to be an iterative process. It's uh, uh, with people to manage it and, and to handle it on a daily basis. Okay. So uh, this is what I wanted to say in a nutshell. I'm not sure how much time do I have. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah that's uh, okay. Uh, I think I'm done. If anyone has any questions, um, I have a question, Abdurrahman. It was a really yeah. good presentation. Maybe you can tell us a bit more on the best approach. I know there's no such thing as best practice, but um, uh, the best way to tackle, especially if you go back to your slide where you were referring to all the different systems that can be moved into a data warehouse. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to so many segregated and sometimes legacy systems, uh, where the, how, how can the DBA and the, um, the DE work together what are the, the ways that they can collaborate and work together to kind of clean it up and create a strong um, data warehouse? Uh, yeah. I know this okay. is a bit of a complex question. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. Um, actually, great question. Uh, I mean, there's uh, there are like two main ways uh, to approach a data warehouse. Let me write it uh, maybe here. And then stop moving. Okay, so there are uh, two main ways uh, uh, in the literature to, to uh, sort of start building your data warehouse, okay? So one is called uh, the data mart approach, one is called the enterprise data warehouse approach. And this is like the going big, going, uh, doing everything together all the time, okay? And uh, the data mart approach is a bit different. It starts like, uh, piece by piece. So for example, uh, we have uh, in, in the organization itself, we have multiple departments, of course. So uh, each data mart is like a mini database uh, or mini, let's say, data warehouse uh, that is curated for that department. Okay. So maybe you have here multiple databases, yes. Okay. But uh, you, you get the information that is needed, let's say, for the marketing department, and you put it in a uh, uh, one uh, table, maybe two tables, uh, database tables that can uh, help you do all, let's say the reporting and dashboards and uh, maybe data science that you have specific to the uh, marketing department, okay? So this is like the uh, data mart approach. You build the data warehouse from the ground up, uh, one data mart uh, uh, per department at a time. And uh, the other approach is to build it basically from top to bottom. You, you try to do it all at once. And this is more, uh, this approach, the data mart approach provides you with, the, with the, uh, like uh, quick results, uh, quick wins. And uh, so people can have uh, faith in the process uh, so that maybe eventually it will end up being like an enterprise uh, data warehouse. And uh, yeah, maybe uh, yeah, for, for organizations, uh, maybe you still don't have a data engineer. This is like normal because maybe uh, upper management does not see the need for a data engineer. So, uh, but you need someone at least with good, let's say at least SQL skills that can uh, organize with the uh, 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 DBA to, to replicate data to somewhere and then they can do, let's say this, 
uh, using SQL do this uh, data much. Okay, and this is how you achieve your uh, quick wins. And then uh, you can uh, yeah, uh, give management the, need, uh, uh, the urgent need that uh, since they, they saw this quick wins, we need to hire more data engineers and build data warehouse, et cetera. I hope this yeah, answers your question. Thank you question. so much, Adra. You're welcome. I think we have.